Right friends, welcome back to English Comprehension and Vocabulary. As already announced, today's topic is, let us not rush into more bank mergers. And tomorrow's article is, this is another important article to fill the vacuum after scrapping FIPB. This FIPB, that is Foreign Investment Promotion Board is going to be scrapped in 2017-18. And what are the repercussions of uh, scrapping this FIPB? These are discussed in the Economic Times editorial of 8th February and this will be discussed tomorrow. And today, let us not rush into more bank mergers. Why this is written? This is written in the backdrop of 5 associate banks merger with SBI. Union cabinet recently took a decision for merging 5 associate banks with the State Bank of India. And let us look at the passage. Let us not rush into more bank mergers. The suggestion is, let us not do more mergers. That means, let us not rush. That means, let us not be in a haste to do more and more mergers. What are the reasons for it? All these things are available in this uh, editorial. This editorial is of Economic Times. The union cabinet's nod, union cabinet's nod, nod means approval or you can say symbol of agreement or approval. One example I have given here, this union government gave its approval for taking up Kane Betwa link project. What is Kane Betwa link project? Kane Betwa link project is the interstate river project between Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh and it is going to benefit Bundel Khand region which is situated in both Uttar Pradesh and Madhya Pradesh. Third important point in this context is it passes through Panna Tiger Reserve. So, these two three things as general knowledge please do not forget. Anyhow, nod means symbol of agreement or approval. So, here union cabinet's approval to the State Bank of India's merger with its own five associate banks is welcome. Merger, what is the meaning of merger? Merger means two separate entities combine to create a new organization here in State Bank of India. All these five associate banks are going to be merged. Union cabinet gave the decision and here another important point from general knowledge perspective is State Bank of Saurashtra merged with SBI in 2008 and State Bank of Indore merged with SBI in 2010. And I would like to throw some light on the difference between merger at the same time acquisition at the same time amalgamation. These are three words are quite often you come across in economy merger. Merger means two entities will combine to become new organization or you can say the organization, one of the organization's name will be retained in merger. When two organizations are combining, one of the organization's name will be retained. So, this is merger. Next one is acquisition. Acquisition is takeover of one entity by another. Takeover of one big entity, one big corporation like Amazon or Flipkart. Amazon or Flipkart, they take over several small e-commerce companies. Several small e-commerce companies are now being taken over by the giants like Amazon or Flipkart. So, acquisition is take over by one entity by another and sometimes this acquisition is also known as takeover. And when somebody talks about takeover, it gives a negative connotation, please do not forget. Under duress or under coercion, if one big firm is taking over one small company, if the word takeover is used, then sometimes it gives negative connotation. So, acquisition is takeover of one entity by another and there is not much difference between merger and acquisition. That is why nowadays the word is combinedly used as mergers and acquisitions. So, nowadays in economy, people talk about mergers and acquisitions. 
right instead of either merger or acquisition people generally use the term mergers and acquisitions or m and a's then amalgamation what is the meaning of amalgamation here combination of two or more companies into a new company here you see company a company b are merging together company a or company b is merging together company a and company b are merging together and a new name is given that is company c it will neither have the name of a nor have the name of b all together new name is given and the previous two companies will lose its legal existence that is amalgamation so there is a difference between mergers and amalgamations amalgamations means when two or more companies coming together and forming entirely new company that is amalgamation and merger means one of the company's name will be retained and in this case state bank of india's name will be retained and state bank of hyderabad the state bank of travancore all will be merged into state bank of india so please understand these words in economy mergers acquisitions takeovers amalgamations because these words are quite frequently one come across in economy it will place after the merger it will place the country's largest lender the country's largest lender is state bank of india it will further place the country's largest lender among the top 50 global lenders once this merger takes place state bank of india will be among the world's one of the top 50 lenders its position will come to somewhere around 50th at present its rank is somewhere around 58th globally and in future it will become 50th bring efficiency because of merger efficiency will be there in treasury operations and it will lower operating costs because of efficiency operating costs will come down what is the meaning of efficiency efficiency means using the resources using the resources such as time materials labor well without wasting any without wasting optimal utilization of time materials then labor will result in efficiency to improve efficiency in operations multinational companies are shedding employees so this is efficiency basically to improve operational competitiveness or you can say optimum utilization of resources is efficiency then i talked about treasury operations in the article it was stated that treasury operations will increase and subsequently the costs will come down so here banking operations there are three types of operations if you look at it from banking perspective one is retail operations retail operations means banking operations involving people like you and me that means house loans you take house loan i take personal loan he take mortgage loan and i take credit card so the operations involving individual customers are basically retail operations then wholesale operations wholesale operations means big operations you can say corporate loans running into hundreds of crores of rupees or thousands of crores of rupees trade transactions trade transactions loans given for a trade both internally and externally working capital requirements for operating jamnagar petroleum refinery working capital may be required by ambani running into thousands of crores of rupees and this is given by the banks and wholesale operations similarly project to finance for constructing expressway between mumbai and delhi thousands of crores are required that is project finance so these are all wholesale operations then third one is treasury operations so with the merger treasury operations efficiency will increase treasury operations means government securities all of you are familiar with banks investing in government securities because 
banks have to ensure certain percentage of SLR. So, as to ensure certain percentage, they have to invest in government securities and other approved securities, money market that is a call market, call money market. Banks participate in call money market. One bank lending money to other bank for one or two days that is call money. So, money market then shares and bonds, banks also invest in shares and bonds then mutual funds. So, these are treasury operations. So, someone talks about banking operations, please do not forget retail operations, wholesale operations and treasury operations. So, let us go back to the passage. So, here it will place the country's largest lender among the top 50 global lenders, bring efficiency in its treasury operations and lower the operating costs. Right? Then let us look at further, bigger size, the size will become bigger, will would allow State Bank of India to finance large infrastructure projects and take over deals with greater ease. The financing of State Bank of India will increase, you may have a doubt what is meant by infrastructure projects. Infrastructure projects are nothing but creating assets which will be useful for future generations, not only this generation by creation of assets, future generations will be benefited that is infrastructure projects. So, the bigger size of SBI will finance infrastructure projects and infrastructure projects, please do not find, please do not forget infrastructure projects can be of economic infrastructure. Economic infrastructure means building world class expressways, bullet trains, world class railways, world class ports, airports, dams, power stations, oil and gas pipelines, these are all economic infrastructure. Then social infrastructure, social infrastructure means which will benefit the community as a whole, education, health, then water supply, sanitation, these are all examples of social infrastructure. One more thing is financial infrastructure. Financial infrastructure is providing banking sector services, insurance services to the common man is financial infrastructure. So, infrastructure can be of these three types, financial infrastructure, social infrastructure, economic infrastructure. So, let us come back to the passage, bigger size would allow State Bank of India to finance large infrastructure projects and takeover deals with greater ease. I have already explained about takeover already, SBA carries the tag, SBA carries the tag, then two commas along with ICICI that is additional information. So, SBI carries the tag along with ICICI of a domestically systemically important bank, domestic systemically important bank or you can say DCIM. These two banks SBI and ICICI are already designated as DCIMs and I would like to explain you. And before explanation, let us complete this and therefore, needs to set aside more capital than its peers to cover risks, than its peers. What is the meaning of peers? Peers means its contemporary banks. The peers of State Bank of India or Bank of Baroda, Punjab National Bank. So, peers means contemporaries. So, in comparison to it peers, State Bank of India require additional capital to be set aside, capital adequacy ratio, capital adequacy ratio is capital required in the numerator and in the denominator risk weighted assets. So, it is 9 percent as per Basel norms, but these two banks have to keep aside more than 9 percent and the combined entity would be well capitalized, that capital adequacy ratio should be proper for the combined entity that means after merger. Now, let us look at the systemically important bank. What is the meaning of it? At the global level, there are 30 systemically important banks. They are called GSIPs, global systemically important banks. In our country, there are two systemically important banks, 
ICICI bank and SBI, they have to keep more capital 0.6 percent for SBI, 0.2 percent for ICICI bank. And what is the exact meaning of DCIPS? Exact meaning of DCIPS is the failure of either State Bank of India or ICICI bank will have lot of impact on the overall economy. Let us assume a situation, if SBI fails, if SBI fails, it will have severe repercussions in the entire economic system of the country, because all are well interconnected, one is connected with the other. When SBI fails, some industries may fail and some persons may lose their total deposits with SBI. So, it is interconnected because of its size, it is designated as systemically important. So, systemic risk means because of interconnection, if one fails, then it will have adverse impact on the other aspects. And please imagine, State Bank of Mysore failed. If a State Bank of Mysore fails, nothing will happen to the overall economic system in the country. But when SBI fails, what will happen? If SBI fails, overall economy will be affected in the country, because uh, several things are interconnected. Lot many people, lot many companies will lose their deposits and one is interconnected with the other, then people, economy will be at risk. This is known as a systemic risk. So, as the size of SBI and ICICI are big, then these two are designated as domestic systemically important banks. Right? So, let us go back to the passage. The passage says that already the SBI carries the tag along with ICICI of a domestic systemically important bank and therefore, needs to set aside more capital than its peers to cover the risks the combined entity should be well capitalized. So, State Bank of India combined entity means after merger must be well capitalized, so as to take care of the risks. Capitalization means ensuring sufficient capital in comparison to the loans. Right? So, this is the meaning of this paragraph. Let us look at the next paragraph. Next paragraph says that, however, however, the merger cannot fix the problem of bad loans. What is the meaning of fix? Fix means solving. The merger cannot solve the problem of bad loans. Fix has got two meanings. One is, please look into this. This bookshelf is fixed to the wall. That is one meaning. The other meaning is basically solving the problem. Here, I gave this example. Please look into it. They could not fix the problem of my air conditioner, since I bought a new one. Fixing the problem means solving the problem or repairing something that is fixed. Other one is fixing it to the wall. So, it has got two meanings in economy. Basically, it involves solving the problem. So, the merger cannot solve the problem of bad loans. They must be resolved, so that capital infusion does not end up as a provisioning against bad loans. So, the bad loans problem must be solved. Otherwise, what will happen? The capital infusion, infusion means the money given to make something stronger. This year budget also, government announced for the year 2017-18 rupees 10,000 crores for capitalization of banks, recapitalization of banks. This is known as capital infusion. So, capital infusion means providing more money or resources to make something stronger. Example is, the company needs a capital infusion of 100 rupees, 100 crores of rupees. So, here non-performing assets, all of you are familiar with non-performing assets, when interest or capital is not paid back for more than 90 days, it becomes NPA. So, banks are suffering, especially public sector banks are suffering because of non-performing assets. When the loan becomes non-performing, its provisioning requirement will increase. You may have a doubt, what is the meaning of provisioning in banking? Provisioning means 
certain money is set aside from the profits of the bank. Suppose, State Bank of India profit is 1000 crores, 100 crores let us take for example, 100 crores is set aside basically to compensate probable loss caused because of lending a loan. Loans always will have a risk, loans will have a risk basically to cover the risk. Money is set aside by the banks that is known as provisioning. They have to keep aside money from the profits and it will take care of the risks when banks are lending loans. So, provisioning it will end up as provisioning for bad loans. Let us go back to the passage. Here the passage says, however, the merger cannot fix the problem of bad loans. They must be resolved so that capital infusion, the money given by the central government does not end up as provisioning against bad loans. If the problem is not solved, what will happen? Whatever the central government is giving money, that money will go as provisioning to take care of bad loans. Right? This is the meaning of this paragraph. So, this provisioning is very important. This provisioning is setting aside money to take care of the future risks, basically to cover the risk when banks are giving loans post 2009-10. That means, subsequent to 9-10, SBI has gained market share in deposits, has gained market share. Market share increased, the meaning is that in deposits after the merger of State Bank of Indore, please do not forget State Bank of Indore was merged with it in 2010. So, consolidation will be beneficial for deposit growth. Consolidation, consolidation is basically two companies or more companies coming together is known as consolidation, right. And the act is known as merger that is different story. And here, when two companies are coming together, that is known as consolidation. Consolidation of digital payment companies is inevitable now. Now, let us see. So, consolidation, two or more companies or two or more banks coming together will be beneficial for deposit growth. However, employee integration could be tricky. Employee integration integration means basically process of combining two or more things because of globalization or you can say globalization means integration of country's economy with the global economy. Integration, there should not be any barriers. One economy must have easy integration with global economy. So, integration means this is the process of combining two or more things into one and here the biggest problem is integration of employees. Tricky means difficult, tricky means difficult. Solving the problem of sharing of river waters between India and Bangladesh is quite tricky, right. So, here integration of employees that is the real difficult task because each and every bank has got its own culture of working, has got its own attitudes, has got its own rules and regulations, has got its own pay structure and allowances. Now, integration of all the bank's employees is going to be tricky, tricky means difficult task, right. So, here the consolidation. So, consolidation will be beneficial for deposit growth. No doubt. However, employee integration could be tricky apart from other reported challenges. What are the other reported challenges? Such as provisions for pension liability due to differing employee benefit structures, provisions for pension liabilities because the employment benefit structures are different. They are differing from bank to bank, bank, to bank. so here giving uniform pension is very difficult. So, that is why provision for pension liabilities after the entity is merged, then that is going to be difficult. And synchronizing accounting policies for recognition of bad loans. For recognition of bad loans, there may be variations from bank to bank and basically in the accounting policies. 
accounting policies or to be synchronized. Synchronized means, please look into this example, the meaning of uh, synchronization is with this example, you can easily understand the word synchronization means to make it happen at the same time and you are watching a light and sound show, synchronization means lights were synchronized with the dance, then only you will enjoy. So, synchronization means basically to make it happen at the same time. So, synchronization is the biggest problem, synchronization of accounting procedures is the biggest problem. Then according to analysis by Kotak institutional equities, one analysis SBA has 18 percent share in branches overall in the Indian banking system, 22 percent share in deposits and loans. It would be in the interest of the industry and economy, it would be in the interest of industry as well as economy to not add to systemic risk. That means, please understand this, it would be in the interest of industry and economy to not add to systemic risk. If the bank becomes more and more bigger, then what will happen? Systemic risk will increase. Already 18 percent of the branches are by SBA, 22 percent of deposits and loans by SBA. If it further increases, what will happen? Systemic risk will increase. Systemic risk, please look at this example, State Bank of India and the companies, individuals are integrated. Infosys has deposited a lot of money with the State Bank of India. Similarly, lot many employees and shareholders are there for Infosys. So, if SBA collapses, what will happen? Infosys will be affected and inter shareholders will be affected. Similarly, if Reliance has got lot of money with the State Bank of India, if State Bank of India collapses, what will happen? Reliance will go away and at the same time, this shareholders will also be affected. So, overall economy will be affected, that is the meaning of systemic risk. So, big entities will create more and more systemic risk, right. To keep banking competitive, to keep banking competitive, he is suggesting and to prevent the creation of banks and to prevent the creation of uh, banks that are too big to fail. When one bank is controlling most of the economic activities, it cannot fail, it is becoming too big to fail. That means, government will not allow it to fail, it will be too big to fail and under those circumstances, uh, government has to support from budgetary resources from budgetary resources. So, too big to fail concept, you have to understand no organization in our country or anywhere should not be too big to fail, right. So, with consolidation, then what will happen? Organizations will become too big to fail, then it is difficult to monitor and subsequently sometimes governments have to support the banks because government cannot afford it to fail, right. So, here and of bankers who are too big to go to jail, here the word why he is used recently, some bankers, some top management was jailed because of some practices, small practices. So, ultimately what will happen? when big structures or big banks are created, then ultimately we are creating banks too big to fail and bankers too big to go to jail. So, the meaning of this is, it is not advisable in anyone's interest to create too big institutions. The government should resist the temptation. Temptation must be resisted by the government to rush into more bank mergers. So, more and more bank mergers must be resisted by the government, that a temptation is to be resisted. India needs, in turn, what is more needed is payment banks and small finance banks to achieve financial inclusion, not gigantism. Here, India needs more payment banks and small banks to achieve financial inclusion, but not gigantism. Here, you have to understand these two words 
the editorial is suggesting what India needs is more and more small banks to have financial inclusion. Financial inclusion, please look into this. Financial inclusion means all the banking services like savings bank accounts as well as insurance policies as well as all other required financial institutional mechanism must be at the common man's reach. Access to basic formal financial services, access to basic financial services is known as financial inclusion and that include remittances, credit, insurance, pension, everything. So, that is known as financial inclusion. That is why government launched three important schemes. One is Chandhan Yojana, bank account, Pradhan Mantri Jeevan Jyoti Bhima Yojana, then Pradhan Mantri Suraksha Bhima Yojana. Why these are launched? These are launched with a view to provide financial inclusion to each and every citizen of the country. So, financial inclusion is the need of the hour, not big banks, gigantic. Gigantic means extremely large. We do not need extremely large banks. I have given one example. The cost of providing Chhatrapati Shivaji statue in Maharashtra is gigantic. Some thousands of crores are being spent on establishing Chhatrapati Shivaji statue in Maharashtra. So, it is gigantic that means extremely large. So, the editorial says extremely large banks will be too big to fail, systemic risk will be more instead of the banks with systemic risk. What we need is small payment banks, small finance banks basically to take care of financial inclusion right up to the grassroot level. Right? Let there be a couple of big banks let there be a couple of big banks at more new banks of different sizes, different sizes new banks and intense competition amongst them. So, that the customer will be benefited. Let us have two big banks at the same time new banks of different sizes and let intense competition be in between them. Intense means very strong, strong competition you can say intense heat wave conditions are prevailing across several parts of the country. Intense means extreme, very strong, strong emotions, strong opinions under those circumstances only you have to use intense not always. So, let there be couple of big banks, similarly small banks. So, as to have financial inclusion let us not have gigantic banks and at the same time let all these banks will have intense competition amongst them. So, this is the opinion of uh, this newspaper, this is economic times, we came to the end of this newspaper editorial. Tomorrow we are going to discuss one important aspect of uh, FIPB and FDI. So, FDA, FPA, and what is meant by FIPB, what is meant by DIPP, what is the difference between foreign direct investment, foreign portfolio investment and what are the suggestions given in this editorial of economic times. These things we are going to deliberate at 12 noon tomorrow and please understand I am amalgamating not only banking and economy terminology with English comprehension. So, in several ways this will be beneficial to you not only for bank PO examinations, probably for the students appearing for civil services also, this will be highly beneficial. Right friends, for the time, for the day, let us conclude. Have a nice day. Thank you. One of the